Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray. I'm Jack Nolan, and coach, just one game this week, a rematch of your classic game earlier this month at Syracuse, a big win for you, and it was another classic game. It just didn't turn out the same way. No, it was disappointing. It was another classic offensive battle, teams that can handle the ball and make shots and you figure if you score 80 points, you're going to be in pretty good position, but you got to give Syracuse credit. We just couldn't stop them enough uh, to get the win. Um, did some nice things, 23 assists, only seven turnovers. I think we made 13 threes. You know, we were in a good offensive rhythm, but probably to beat Syracuse, you almost have to get it close to 90 because they are really hard to guard. It was another fun game to watch and to call. Lots of highlights. We'll show you all the highlights coming up right after this timeout. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Coca-Cola, Under Armour, Gatorade, Vivid Seats, Canon, and Sirius XM. No one can question your team's heart. And it was embodied again in this game by T.J. Gibbs. Doesn't practice Monday. Lasts about 15 minutes on Tuesday. Right before the game starts, has to run to the locker room to throw up. And then he comes out and hits two threes to get you going. Yeah. I, I felt for him, you know, not the best of timing. You know, he was struggling. He worked his way through it, but was certainly hurting. And, and that didn't help us. But you know, the one thing about TJ, I think he's having a great senior year. He's playing well, and he's a really tough kid. He's gonna try and do anything he can for his team. And we just need to get him back and get him healthy uh, for Florida State. Now, after he hit those two threes, you come back and score your next eight points in the paint. And attacking the paint is a key to beating the zone. Yeah, I think you always wanna start inside. And I thought we did a really good job both games we played them, you know, getting the ball to the foul line and then making some decisions, being able to pass high-low. Our big guys are good passers. Johnny, Juwan, Nate, uh, Dane gets to the high post. We're good passing the ball there. And so, you know, I had no fault with how we got started. We were in a good offensive rhythm. We made some threes. We were moving the ball. Um, we got up. We, we played a little bit of zone against them because they're hard to guard one-on-one. -on -one. They're good one-on-one -on -one guys, and that helped us for most of the first half. Nate Lashewski had one of his better games, 11 points, five rebounds, a night that was embodied by a great play early in the game where he blocks the shot on the defensive end and then ends up with the corner three on the offensive end. You know, I, I thought he had, and it, it was, we lost, and, and you try and find positives still, especially with these sophomores. I thought he had a, a better presence than he's had, you know, uh, and, and he's starting to really feel like he belongs. And, you know, we just have to get him more playing time the rest of the the season. They actually had a 13 point run to take the lead and then the rest of the half was really entertaining. You guys got it going again, seven lead changes and a tie in the closing moments of the half, but they score the last five points in the final 47 seconds and had a little momentum going in at halftime. Yeah, that was a big momentum. You know, anytime you can score before half, you go in feeling better about ourselves and you know, then we start the second half and we talk about defending better and playing man to man and they get a layup right off the bat. And all of a sudden you're double digits down and you're digging out of that ever present hole that we've been in. Now, we can get out of it because we've gotten out of it many times, but man, is it exhausting digging out of a hole. Zach and I kept looking at TJ and he was really fighting it in the second Yeah, half. he fought through it. He's He he was really struggling. And again, there, there's not a tougher kid we've had come through the program. He's a competitive guy. And, 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 and so I feel for him. He gave us everything he had, but uh, there were times when I was trying to get him a rest for a little bit and get some Gatorade in him and get him back. And, you know, it's just bad timing. And, and the best thing is we got a couple days to get him healthy. Syracuse goes up by eight with 35 seconds left. And it seems like yeah. the game is done. But again, your guys battled all the way down to the stretch. Gibbs and Fluger hit threes. Rex hit two threes in the game. Then Hub steals the inbounds pass that leads to a Mooney basket. And it's a two-point game with 10 seconds left. Uh, it's, you know, I, I, again, I, I, I feel for our guys because they continue to lay it on the line and just keep fighting till the end. Um, we haven't been able to finish enough of them. Um, when we've done that. We've finished a few, so we know what it feels like. Um, but I, as long as that heart and desire doesn't change, I think we'll get ours. So you lose a tough one, 84-82. 
and you've lost enough tough ones where now is the time some teams start to break. I ran into John Mooney after the game and he was like, got to keep battling. We're going to get the next one and almost complete confidence to the point of almost being a little angry that you better watch out down the road because we're just not going to let this keep happening. Yeah, I think I, I don't think I'm never worried about this group being broken psychologically. I mean, uh, uh, they're older. They've been through a lot of stuff and I, I think they will continue to play and continue to fight and continue to compete. And as coaches, if we can, in the last four minutes, try and help them with the right personnel and put them in a better position, I think it really can turn for us. Now, Coach, we haven't talked a lot about John Mooney in this segment. He had another great performance, and we didn't talk about him, folks, in this segment because he is our performance of the week. So we'll show you all the John Mooney highlights from the Syracuse game in our next segment coming up right after this. John Mooney led the Irish against Syracuse with 21 points, 13 rebounds, including eight offensive rebounds, a career-high six assists, plus a block and a steal to earn this week's Vivid Seats Performance of the Week Award. Mooney at the foul line for the jumper. That's good. Up and good. Mooney with another rebound. That's just as basketball. Mooney drives down the lane, double pumps, turn around, jump, hook around the rim, and in! It's a one-point game. Brilliant pass by Mooney. Kind of having a good year, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm so proud of the player he's become. I think I've said this before, Jack, as a freshman and sophomore, honestly, I didn't envision this kind of improvement. But you got to give 90% of the credit to John Mooney to work stay disciplined, know what he does well. I think Ryan Humphrey has done a great job tutoring him through his years, but right now, um, he's a man among boys on that front line. The stuff that he does night after night after night is really amazing when you step back and look at it. The hard work is obvious. You have coached so many great players, beginning with your days at DeMatha right to now. Does John have any traits that are unique? Well, the, the physically, physically, the trait, he, he, is, he is such a gifted athlete. The ability to get off the floor quickly on one, two, and the third jump. He continually stays in there. And that is God-given athletic ability. A lot of hard work with Tony Rolinski to tune that up. Um, and then he's got a toughness about him. You know, he really has developed kind of a toughness about him and a workmanlike effort. He's one of the great workers we've ever had in the offseason, working on his game. Um, but the ability to rebound out of his area with two hands over and over and over again for 34 or 35 minutes a game, that is physically almost impossible. But somehow John Mooney does that. Coach, as you know, this is also Coaches versus Cancer Suits and Sneakers Week, and it really hits home for this Notre Dame team this year. We'll explain why right after this. This week is Coaches versus Cancer Suits and Sneakers Awareness Week, and this year the fight against cancer hits close to home for the Fighting Irish. In September, Rex Pfluger's mom, Rebecca, passed away after a brave battle with brain cancer. The entire team traveled to California for the memorial service. Before the Syracuse game, the team received special basketball shoes to support Rex and honor his mom in both of Notre Dame's games this week. The Coaches versus Cancer charity that is the charity of the NABC, and we've been really involved with it here since I got here. These are our shoes that we put together. Certainly, we have the shamrock on there, but the blue butterflies on there uh, to honor Rebecca Fluger, and there'll be an RP on the back of there. So I thought, very, very fitting. I know my mom. She lived her life full of love, passion, feelings, and fun. She loves blue butterflies. That was her sign. She was the person that radiated positivity and love to everyone she's ever met. She was just overall a beautiful soul. Rex is such an important part of this basketball team. But after he got hurt last year, the decision on whether or not he was going to come back was going to be held probably until the end of the season. Then you found out about his mom's diagnosis and you just made the decision, I don't care what role he plays, 
we're bringing him back. Yeah, he needed to be back with his Notre Dame family, no question about it. And my gosh, do we miss Rebecca Pfluger. What a positive, powerful woman she was. And we all went through it with Rex. Um, so to be able to honor her uh, the other night, I thought was special with the cool shoes we put together. I have a lot of respect for Rex. He's handled injury, loss of a mom. And he's handled a lot of stuff like a man. And he'll always have a special spot in my heart. Coaches versus Cancer has been very important to you since you became a head coach. Since you've come to Notre Dame in the last 19 years, you've raised more than $3.5 million for the fight against cancer. Why is this so important to you? I think it jump-started. What jump-started me, Jack, was my dad was diagnosed with a malignant melanoma uh, in the early 90s, and we were able to get him the right treatment. Uh, so when I went to the University of Delaware, uh, I, I started the, the, the Coaches versus Cancer program there, which was not real elaborate. But out here, you've been a big help to Thank our you. program. I appreciate it's been that. An honor. We've had this whole community embrace our Coaches versus Cancer. We've raised a lot of money here. And what I love about it, as we know, 75% of the funds stay in our area. And of course, you'll be again hosting. I may play a small role again in the Night of the Stars and your golf tournament. That's coming up August 3rd and 4th of this year. For more information, you can go to the website, cvccelebrationofhope.org. Inside Notre Dame Basketball continues right after this timeout. Five seasons ago, Pat Connaughton became just the fourth Notre Dame basketball player in 30 years to serve as the only captain for a men's basketball team. Connaughton proved to be one of the greatest leaders in the history of the program and led the Irish to the ACC championship. Pat is now in his fifth season in the NBA and is a key member of the team with the best record in the league, the Milwaukee Bucks. During the offseason, Connaughton took some time to take us down the road that led him to the NBA one of the youngest cousins in my family so all the older ones were always playing and I was always you know the kid that uh, had to try to keep up with them and I think that really helped me growing up and then just playing with my dad and learning from him and he was always active in the sports and um, you know I, I give him a lot of credit for helping me um, you know whenever I wanted to play he was always there the more sports that I could play I wanted to play even if it was you know one that was different than the three that I played uh, competitively I think it really helped me grow as an athlete in the areas that uh, you know I needed to with coordination and just different uh, athletic skills and I think it benefited me uh, as I grew up junior summer going into my senior year of high school um, I didn't have any division one offers it was all uh, d2 and lower for basketball and so I knew that summer was gonna uh, kind of determine my future I had played baseball um, all summer every summer you know, ever since I was a kid that was you know my time to play baseball and I'd play on different teams uh, and I was just uh, you know a baseball player in the summer and that's why uh, I had so much interest in it I think and a lot of people thought my potential was in baseball but I wanted to make sure that before I rode off basketball, I at least gave myself an opportunity um, on a national scale, and I was able to go down to nationals and go play my game. I was able to get in front of coaches, they were able to see me play, and apparently they liked what they saw, and I was able to go up against some you know, highly touted competition down there, which I think kind of affirmed uh, my belief in my ability to, to play at the next level and to play at the highest level. My teammate and I, Jaron Grant, both uh, had a decision to make um, about coming back, and we wanted to make sure that we left Notre Dame basketball the way we wanted to leave it. We left the legacy here. We left something that was bigger than just us, that kind of built a program uh, and helped, you know, Coach Bray, the rest of the coach staff, and the university overall helped them, you know, build upon it. And we wanted to make sure that when we left, we kind of brought Notre Dame basketball to a place where we hadn't been in a long time, and uh, we were able to do some things that had never been done. And uh, you know, we want to make sure that's what we came in looking to do and that's what we left making sure that we did. Coach Bray, he's one of the best, you know, coaches in America. I think uh, I wouldn't trade playing for him for, for anybody else. And Notre Dame set you up to, to realize it was a really great experience. It was something that, um, you know, everyone dreams of as a kid hearing their name called, but it's also just the beginning of another journey, something that you want to make sure you build upon and you have, uh, you know, even more success with uh, in order to, you know, again, represent the places you come from, represent the school that you played for and represent your family. Mike, why do you think Pat's been so successful? What, what do they call it? It factor? Yeah. The it factor with certain special athletes. 
And I can't put my finger on maybe one, two, three things. There's a number of them, but he's got it. There's a, certainly, he's a great athlete, um, but there is a way about him to interact with teammates and coaches. Um, there is a poise about him, especially in crunch time situations where he believes he can make the play. Um, unbelievable special young man to have worked with and coached. And I don't think anybody is surprised that Pat Connaughton has found a home in the NBA. Well, and you recognized his special qualities even before the ACC championship season because you made him your only captain. And I've got to be honest, I've been around here a long time. I don't think I've ever been around a better leader. Maybe our best leader, Jack, no question about it. You know, and he had those traits even as a freshman. You know, guys followed him, the old guys kind of, you know, uh, were around him, listened to him when he spoke, even though he didn't speak much as a freshman. Uh, but there's something about him when you play with him and how he talks to you, you feel better and more confident. And that includes me. When I, every year I coached him, when he would come to a huddle and go, we're gonna be all right, coach. I'm like, okay, we're gonna be all right. And so just a great story and, and we're very, very proud of him. It's time now for the experts at Tyrac.com. Question of the week for Coach Bray. Now, this week's question comes from Cody Ousley of Bourbon, Indiana. Coach, more and more smaller schools are upsetting big-time programs. Is college basketball more competitive than it's ever been? I think it has. It is more competitive. And you look, we've had, what, eight number one teams. So there's nobody running away from it up top. The mid-major programs, I came from a mid-major at the University of Delaware. When you have really good guards and you have this three-point line you can beat anybody and um I, I think it just gets more and more interesting every year and it makes the NSA tournament more and more interesting another huge test for your team coming up this weekend in tallahassee we'll preview the matchup with fifth rank florida state right after this timeout Before we get to your next challenge, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about a guy who played a huge role in your life, played a huge role in the success of Notre Dame basketball. That's Hall of Famer Morgan Wooten, who passed away. Passed away uh, the other day. Jack, I just, I don't know where to start with him. You know, I was around him from 10 years old on at his basketball camp, played for him in high school, went back and coached with him. There's things I do every day here at Notre Dame that I learned and watched Morgan Wooten do when I played for him and coached with him. And I was so blessed to be around him. The ultimate educator, um, the ultimate gentleman you would want your son with. He made a man out of a lot of people, me being one of them. Your team has risen to every challenge this year. They just haven't closed every challenge. I'm not sure it's gonna get any bigger this season than going down to Tallahassee to take on the Seminoles when they're atop the league standings. Well, amazing challenge. We played well down there, but we haven't won down there yet. And I like how we played on the road, quite frankly. I think we've had a little bit better swagger on the road than we've had here at home. And so we're gonna need that, And but it's an opportunity. It's another reason you look and go, the bad news is the ACC, oh my God, it's a hard league. The good news is here comes one where if you get it, it can jumpstart you. You have been in situations like this before and your program is known for making runs often in February, but to do that, you're gonna have to start winning at home and you get another chance to do that against Wake Forest. Yeah, we're gonna have to be better at home. There's no question about it. I think we're all frustrated that we have not been able to finish a game at home. We played three league close ones. Um, and, and again, I, I think that's one you address on Monday and let's let's get into a road mentality. But um, yeah, if, if you're gonna be for real, gotta do something with the remaining home games. All right, let's head down to yeah. Tallahassee. Okay. Coach, thank you very much. Folks, thank you for watching. We'll be back next week with all the highlights of Notre Dame's games with Florida State and Wake Forest. Until then, for Coach Bray, I'm Jack Nolan. Thank you so much for tuning in every week. And as always, go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Coca-Cola, Under Armour, Gatorade, Vivid Seats, Canon, and Sirius XM.